About 150,000 people suffer ACL knee injuries a year in this country. Local 15 Sports Director Lance Crawford joins us now. Lance, you saw firsthand how those repairs are made a lot different than it used to be. Yeah, Greg and Kim, not that long ago, an ACL tear was a career ender for an athlete, but that's changed over the last 25 years, even more so in the last 10. Better technology and techniques have not only given athletes hope of getting back on the field, but playing as well as they could before the injury. In part one of our series, Needing Surgery, we not only take you inside the operating room, but inside the knee of a local athlete undergoing ACL reconstruction. Scott Hunter was an NFL quarterback for eight years. In 1979, he tore the anterior cruciate ligament in his right knee, essentially ending his career. And I was in the full leg cast uh, for upwards of six weeks before it was cut off, and then of course went through the normal rehab after all the atrophy, uh, you know, the thigh and so forth. Almost four decades later, a six inch scar remains, a reminder of the surgical techniques of that time. We've been trying to repair the ACL or dealing with the ACL for a hundred years. Dr. Clayton Lane is a surgeon at Alabama Orthopedic Clinic in Mobile. The first 75 years of that, we were trying to repair the ACL and it never worked. There's some issues with blood supply. That's why the ACL doesn't heal when you tear it, and it wouldn't heal when we tried to repair it. In the 70s and early 80s, surgeons began reconstructing the ACL with a tendon or other tissue from elsewhere in the patient's body. Success rates increased to about 80%, but a major change in the last decade has improved that to better than 90%. In the past, when we were reconstructing the ACL, we placed it in a vertical position. And what we've learned through the years is that it's better to place it the way God made us, which is at the anatomic origin of the ACL. On this morning, BC Rain basketball player Ashante Womack-James is scheduled for ACL surgery with Dr. Lane. She injured her knee in a game two months prior. When I first found out that I tore my ACL, I cried because I'm so active. We're gonna take two hamstrings from this side of the, the knee and we're gonna actually remove those hamstrings from the body, take them to the back table and then prepare them into a four-stranded uh, hamstring graft. The operating room is prepared and so is the patient. Small incisions that go into the knee, that's for the camera and the instrumentation. And then one small incision here to harvest our hamstring tendons, which run back here to the back of the thigh. Water is continually flushed through the knee, allowing for a better view. The camera confirms the MRI results that Ashante's ACL is indeed torn, and Dr. Lane continues from there. Two hamstring tendons are removed, then given off to be prepared. And my assistant, Jamie, in the back here, he's going to start preparing the graft. That saves us time while she's asleep and that the tourniquet's up so that I can continue to work. The old ACL is then cleaned out. And once the hamstrings are ready, it's time to put the construction in ACL reconstruction. That's good there. Once a tunnel is drilled, the tendon is attached to the bone. So this button is going to go to the outer cortex of the femur and flip and be like a grappling hook. Um, or hold on to it like a grappling hook. So here we go, going in. And you can feel it pop right there. I pull back. And that's as hard as I can pull right there. It's not going anywhere. I really like the way that looks. And about an hour after entering the operating room, Ashante's knee is stitched up, wrapped in a cold compress to reduce swelling. A brace is then applied, and it's off to the recovery room, and almost certainly a full recovery from the injury. And then her case went very smoothly, straightforward, about an hour on the tourniquet time, as you saw. So that's about as nicely as it can go. She's 98% success rate. She should be able to return to her previous level of play one year after the surgery. And we certainly want to thank Dr. Lane and his staff for allowing us to sit in on Ashante's operation. Now tomorrow in part two of our series, Needing Surgery, we'll find out what's involved in the rehabilitation process following ACL surgery.